Today we'll be taking a look at the fully enclosed Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt diode laser engraver made by Creality. Along with setting up the machine with the included enclosure, general laser safety and seeing the results it can produce. The laser kit arrives in a large box and everything comes neatly packaged and well protected. The Falcon 2 Pro comes almost completely assembled in the box and with a pre-assembled metal frame it means there's only a few steps needed to set up the machine. Next the kit comes with a 40 watt blue diode laser module for general cutting and engraving as well as a bonus 1.6 watt blue diode laser module that's suited for fine detail engraving. The laser module slides into the carriage and is held in place with two thumb screws. The 40 watt laser module also has a protective glass filter cover and it has a triple monitoring system for airflow, fire detection and lens monitoring. Next the air hose is connected to the laser module and the cabling is plugged in. There's some handy built in clips for securing the air hose and keeping the cables neat and tidy. Rather than using a honeycomb bed, the Falcon 2 Pro comes with bars and these are installed into the slots on either side. What's good about these is they can be spaced closely together or spread out depending on the size and type of material we're using. They can also be laid flat to create a surface which is ideal for engraving. The work area of the laser is 400 by 450 millimeters which is a good amount of space for hobby projects. Moving on to building the top enclosure, this is built up by simply bolting the parts together and when assembling we just need to take note of which side the fan and USB camera port is on. The transparent protective film slides into the track slots and then the end aluminium pieces are bolted on. The front door slides into the tracks and then the LED light strip is bolted into place. With the enclosure built up it's placed on top of the laser unit and then the two acrylic side panels are installed. These are bolted into the top enclosure and into the base unit securing the two parts together. Next a couple of cables are plugged in for the front LED light and exhaust fan. It also comes with a built in internal camera which is great for positioning project designs and for monitoring the jobs. At the side there's an extraction fan and this connects to a duct pipe to remove the smoke and fumes which is ducted outdoors. A separate air assist pump is included and this helps with removing smoke from the surface, protecting the lens and producing cleaner results when cutting. The air pump is placed next to the laser and a single cable plugs into the side of the frame for control and to receive power. Just above the plug is the manual dial for adjusting the airflow. A low setting is used for engraving and a higher setting is used for cutting and the airflow can be also adjusted within the software. On the left side of the enclosure we have a switch for the exhaust fan control and this can be set to auto or to on which allows us to override the auto control in case we need a longer run time on the fume and smoke extraction. At the front of the frame we can find a simple control panel for homing, framing and starting a job. The control panel is mainly used when working from the SD card without having a computer connected. The machine can be operated either via file on the micro SD card or connected to a PC via the USB port and operated within the software. On the side we can also find the power socket and the on off power switch. At the top of the enclosure there's a separate USB-C connection for the internal camera. So we do have two USB cables in total to connect to the computer. Just above the front panel is a key to lock out the machine from unauthorized use and there's an emergency stop button to quickly stop the machine and this is in an easy to reach location. Inside there's an internal LED light bar which is great for lighting up the work area and on the side there's a small switch for the light and this can be set to auto which the machine controls or to always on. There's also auto laser shut off if the front door is opened or if the front waste drawer is opened. The machine's enclosure is class 1 certified and it has some excellent safety systems but I'd still recommend always wearing the correct certified safety glasses to protect your eyes. Before using any laser machine, it's best practice to check the laser wavelength and then select the suitable laser glasses for the required protection. For this particular machine, the laser's wavelength on the 40 watt module is 455 plus or minus 5 nanometers. The correct laser safety glasses will have the wavelength range protection, the optical density, and these will also be certified as laser safe. 
The laser engraver can work with a variety of materials such as paper, wood, anodized aluminium and stainless steel. But take note, some materials and binding agents found in the materials are toxic and give off harmful fumes when engraved or laser cut. Always research and check the material's properties before using it with the laser machine. The machine can be operated by SD card or via the USB-C port with a computer. For the SD card, it will only read the last G-code file saved on the card. This file can be cut and engraved as many times as needed from the machine. But if you want to change designs or settings, the card needs to be removed and a new G-code file needs to be saved to the card. Now to prepare the machine, there's a handy multi-level focus block included for setting up the laser's focus. This tool has three levels to set the height and laser focus for engraving and cutting, all depending on the material thickness. For this sample, we'll be using the cutting thickness setting for 2mm material. To adjust the laser, the two thumb wheels holding the laser module are loosened. The focus block tool is placed on top of the material and under the edge of the laser module. The thumb wheels are retightened and then the focus block is removed. The first test is the included eagle file and this file is only a cutout without any engraving. It's a quick test to complete and it's quite impressive to see the accuracy and detail the machine can produce. While the files can be cut and engraved from the SD card, it's far easier to connect the machine directly to a computer to control and monitor the machine. This makes it easy to change settings, adjust designs and to start and stop the machine. For the software, Creality recommends either Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. Lightburn is the preferred choice, it's easy to use and works really well with the machine. But keep in mind, it's only a 30 day free trial. The Lightburn software can be set up to accept a variety of vector and raster files including PNG, SVJ, JPEG and DXF. With the file loaded into the software, we can adjust the settings for the laser power and speed. The file is then saved as a G-code to the SD card or sent directly to the machine via USB. Making test engravings and cuts is normally the best way to check the material and to see what speed and power settings are needed. Luckily, Creality provides a handy quick start guide with recommended speed and power settings for a range of materials and these make a good starting point. With the laser connected to the software, one of the first things we need to do is calibrate the internal camera. There's an included dotted calibration card in the package and this is placed onto the laser's bed and captured in various locations as prompted by the software. With that done, the camera is aligned with a four point test pattern which is engraved onto a board and these four points are then selected in the software to confirm. After this, you still may need to fine tune and adjust the offset and it's recommended to recheck when changing the laser modules. To test out the camera's positioning, we click on update overlay. Then five small circles are created on the scrap board and these are then cut out with the laser. With the pieces cut out, these are placed randomly back on the laser's bed. In the software, we click on update overlay, which gives us an updated image of the items on the laser's bed. From here a small leaf pattern is added to the circles and this is set to engrave. The machine is started and the pattern is engraved onto the circles. It gave a good result and using the camera overlay is especially handy if you have multiple items to set up and to cut out or to engrave. For the next test, a toothpick is set up on the laser's bed to test the camera on a smaller item. We're still using the 40 watt laser module to engrave the text and using the camera overlay allows us to position text on even smaller items. With everything aligned, the job is sent to the laser. It worked well, however the text isn't the sharpest. So the 40 watt module is switched out and the test is resent with the 1.6 watt module. The toothpick is engraved with a text and this time the result was nice and clean. Keep in mind this text is about 2mm in height so it's quite impressive seeing the accuracy and detail. A piece of standard printer paper is the next material to be used on the laser. Settings for this with the 40 watt laser module are at 3600mm per minute at 50% power.
the laser managed to cut out the standard piece of printer paper without any issues, and it's interesting to see the results and how effortlessly it can cut out paper with so much detail. What's also good is the off-cut pieces fall through the bars and are all collected in the waste tray, which makes the cleanup process quick and easy. Next we're going to take a look at a quick comparison of the 1.6 watt versus the 40 watt laser modules. The main difference here is the power and the spot size. The 1.6 watt module allows for finer detail, but in turn takes longer to complete the job. Whereas the 40 watt module has more power for faster cutting, but not quite as detailed on smaller text when engraving. We can see the differences between the text where the 1.6 watt looks crisp and sharp versus the 40 watt looks a little softer around the edges. Now at the top of the laser module there's a small switch that allows us to change between two modes, a 40 watt normal mode and a 22 watt precise mode. Repeating the test with a 22 watt mode showed an improvement in the text quality compared to the 40 watt. So for fast cutting and general engraving, use the 40 watt module. And if you need a little bit more precision, use the 22 watt mode. And for the finest details, use the 1.6 watt module. Next we've got a thicker 10 mil piece of basswood. For this we'll engrave a logo, and then cut out around the edges. For the engraving part, the 40 watt laser is set to 30% power at 6000 mm per minute. Once the engraving is complete, the laser is set to cut around the logo at 100% power at 280 millimeters per minute. The finished project result gave a nicely engraved and cut out logo and the machine had no issues cutting around the thicker piece of wood. The laser worked really well on all projects and jobs sent to the machine. There was a little bit of smoke marking on the thicker cuts but these can be easily cleaned up. Using the camera has been great for aligning projects in the software and there was no need to go back over to the machine to check and adjust the framing. Overall the Falcon 2 Pro has built upon the previous version and delivered essential features like the integrated enclosure for user safety, an internal camera, and there's the handy waste collection tray for quickly cleaning up. It has an excellent build quality, and the laser engraver is quick to set up and very easy to operate. And with the included laser modules, it's a capable and versatile tool that can be used for cutting, marking, and engraving a variety of materials. Let me know what you think about the Falcon 2 Pro Laser Engraver and check the description for links and additional information. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below.